Hello! At Made with Default Jam 2025, we hosted Endel Dreyer, the creator of Colisius, the multiplayer framework that is suitable to make multiplayer games in default. Together with Endel, I also created an example of a real-time multiplayer game made with Default and Colisius, so check it out and meanwhile I invite you to check out the recording of the talk by Endel. Alrighty, I think my presentation can collaborate a bit with the crazy games guys because as they mentioned very well, like the multiplayer games tend to have a long tail and perhaps more engagement sometimes. So I'm going to talk about Colisius, that is an open source uh, multiplayer framework. It won't be very technical. Uh, it's mostly, uh, I'll show a, a bunch of nice games that I was uh, gathering yesterday. Like, uh, I was really excited gathering a lot of games made with Colisius, and perhaps my presentation got too big. Uh, it's, uh, but uh, I'll try to skip some slides real quick because I got like 35 slides. Most of them are uh, cool games made with Colisius. And at the very end, there's uh, some demos with the default engine and one uh, Pavel, the one of the organizers here was very nice of him to make the port of that example. So really thanks to him. So starting, well, if you don't know the framework, highly recommend checking out the uh, website to learn more. It has rooms uh, built in. It's really the core of the framework is rooms for any connection to be made with, from clients to the server is through rooms, matchmaking clients into rooms, very custom uh, synchronizable data structures, which is called uh, schema. Yeah, I, I think this past year I've been working on schema. Uh, mostly all of my time was dedicated to the latest version of schema. It's really, uh, it's crazy stuff going on there. And it's the majority of bugs also comes from schema. So, but yeah, we, we try to keep it uh, as bug free as possible. And more recently, uh, authentication. Yeah, I won't go too much on, on code, but basically you would define a room in the server and you expose that room for the SDK. So here there's uh, also a filter by, it means you, you could have the, the client dictating which room he's going to be uh, directed to. So if you, the client provides the code a specific code, then it will go to that specific room. For the uh, default integration, this is the boilerplate for connecting with the room. So you provide that identifier that was declared in the server. And basically you have a room connection and you can send data, receive data, and listen to the state callbacks that the server has uh, because yeah, yeah, basically the server mutates the state and then you receive the state on the client side. And uh, this is a diagram of a more complicated scenario. So basically a single process can handle multiple rooms and rooms are tied to a specific process. And the clients necessarily connect directly to the process and the machine that those rooms live in. So generally, one server can handle a lot of load, like a single instance generally can handle like from 500 to 3000. It depends on how, uh, how heavy your logic is and how much traffic your server is handling. Traffic in the terms of messages. On this diagram, it's basically saying how the connection is established for a particular client with a particular server. And it could be also a single server. So this diagram could be, represent either a single server with multiple processes or multiple servers with also multiple processes. So necessarily you would have a single uh, load balancer, which can be more instances of a load balancer. And on Colisius, you have two requests. So the first request you ask for a room, you receive the data where the, that room is, and then you can connect directly to that room that you are asking for. Uh, this is a real example of a single instance uh, handling to 500 connections. 
This is the limit for this particular game because uh, it's already uh, very high in CPU. So if you need to scale more than this, you need uh, you will need more machines. This game uh, already is handling multiple rooms. Then you can scale easily. There's a big problem that is unsolvable right now. That is, if you have only a small amount of rooms or let's say one big room it's really impossible to scale because you really need to be able to separate those clients into multiple rooms to be able to distribute these rooms across many uh, machines or processes. This is a new on the latest version. Uh, there was a big problem uh, since the latest version that all state data, all the schemas are uh, visible uh, globally. So you couldn't really have a way to uh, have particular clients be aware of just a small amount of data, either for security or for optimization. As this is new, also, uh, I've been fixing bugs <laughs> about this until like past month. Hopefully now, uh, I mean, I, it's, I can't say bug free, but hopefully it works better than it used to. But uh, yeah, I'm always looking out for fixing any issues that have with the latest versions. So yeah, I'll go briefly how you can specify specific parts of the state to be visible for specific clients. The scenario of a card game, you usually only you would be able to see your own cards. It's fine for other players to know the number of cards you have. I mean, this example doesn't, doesn't cover the scenario of like users uh, not knowing the amount of cards. So here the view tag is being used on both the suit and number fields. All the other fields are visible to all players. For you to use the state view, you need to first assign the create an instance of the state view for a particular client. It's a special keyword like client.view only accepts a state view. On this piece of code, it's a bit implicit, but this.state.cards has the, all the cards in the game and the server is expecting a discard message here that says that that card was played and then it all adds that card to everyone else's state view. And if you need to remove, you, you need to do that manually as well. So, so you need to iterate over the state views and remove that item from the state views, or you can remove the item completely from the state. So it's a new thing. It's I'm getting feedback and uh, trying to improve. This approach is being easier to maintain and easier to, to evolve as the previous approach that was uh, with filters and it was crazy. Uh, I don't even want to remember <laughs> about that. So yeah, yeah, I'm going to show some cool games made with Colisius. The very first one, I, I can't not say about this. Uh, it's already old news, but the guys from uh, Tiny Dobbins made this game. I, I helped them make the server. It was the reason why the default SDK exists today. So we made the default SDK back then in 2019. And since then, we've been, me and the community, improving the default SDK and keeping it up to date with the latest versions of the framework. It's very basic, a physics-based game, etc. All right, next, it's kind of a platform. It's not only a game. They have uh, multiple uh, small games inside this blocks platform. I mean, right now, the, those parkour games are really taking off. There are so many of them, but I think they were one of the first to release a parkour game on the web. And after the success of that parkour game, Arthur, the author of this game, decided to go next level and they released game after game and started uh, really small as an indie and now uh, i think he has a team of i don't know how many members but it, yeah it started as indie and now he is building a company on top of this game emolingo is also doing really well they all their games currently uh use colises they kind of build their own framework on top of it because i think they use play canvas right now yeah, they, they are non-stop releasing games, game after, after game for three years, I think. And they're performing really well as well. Simply Up is from Elandra Studios, from Leonidas. They are also building 
a portfolio of games. They have been using uh, Colossus for a few years, and sometimes he offers a connected world uh, online classes using Play Canvas and Colossus. It's just uh, really, really cool to see. Uh, Make It Meme also started as uh, indie, and now they are a company. I think they, they managed to get this big from COVID times, so everybody wanted to have some fun. And it's basically a place where you gather together and make some memes and laugh at memes. Uh, right now, you can also play from mobile. So you, in person, you could like gather with a group of friends and start uh, making memes and just having a good time. More recently, Legend Games started adopting Colossus as well. I think they have two games released right now. And a really talented team. I mean, it, pulling off a... I don't know how to pull off a FPS game. It's really... Uh, for me, it's really complicated. And yeah, this is also really cool because they... Voxel managed to get on the top action game on Discord activities. So if you go to, to launch a Discord activity and you scroll to the action game section, Voxel is there. Discord activities is kind of a new thing and... It's another platform to consider for web. I, I really love on Rush Studio. They their attention to detail is really it's really cool. They also recently started adopting uh, Colossus for a few of their games, not their big games. I think they have multiple modes as well inside the game itself. I wasn't aware of the many people joining together these games, so it's really fun. Similarly. On Rush also released a fishing game, and I think it also has some small mini games on it. And another thing that On Rush does really well is their mobile support. So this game is running on mobile. This is a new one. It's um, this is an unreleased game. All the games that I've, I've mentioned previously were released in, in production games. Uh, this one is not in production yet, but I think it's going to do really well. They they, they are on wishlist on Steam right now, and they made it using uh, Construct3, if I'm correct. Uh, another one is from Team Flow on the audience. Also, similarly, they, uh, it, it's not fully released, if I'm right. I, I think it's uh, on uh, online on beta, and uh, also a small clip. I'll play here. They have a, a 25 versus 25 mode, and I think that there's some uh, something that you do that affects other screen and it's like a crazy mode inside. Uh, of course, they have a single player mode uh, that you progress over like a map or something. Cool, so this is their Steam page. Yeah, so the next slide, big disclaimer, I know a lot of people don't like crypto or are not big fan of crypto, but yeah, a, a lot of crypto games, they choose Colossus because it's it's free and easy to host. And it's nice that a lot of them uh, use it and help. Yeah, by using and also reporting any issues basically grows the framework. And most of them run on the Ronin chain. I don't understand much of the crypto world, so I'm just sharing because it's uh, interesting to see. Perhaps there there is something to be explored on the crypto space. Uh, I personally don't don't know much about it and just observe and see. Um, alrighty, I think that's it for the games. Cool. So now perhaps less exciting because the games are really cool. The demos, one is not new as well. It's this small tic-tac-toe turn-based two-player shared experience. It was ported by Selim a few years ago, I think seven years ago, but we, we still keep it updated. There's the search code available on GitHub. And more recently, this was ported by Pavel himself. And yesterday we put it online and it only works on desktop. It doesn't work on mobile. If you can, you will see a small arrow at the bottom. That Then you click on that arrow, you click connect, and then you click join or create. So yeah, this is still under development. I think, uh, I think Pavel wants to do some improvements on this. It is made of the Photom example made by Bjorn. He made for the native Photom plugin, and we ported, I mean, Pavel ported to use Colesis. 
So it's really cool. I think Bjorn wants to make this like go-to example for any uh, multiplayer provider for default. So Colisus is all about open source. Everything is MIT licensed. The server, the SDKs, it's all open. So far, I run a script, uh, and so far we had 160 contributors of code directly across all repositories. Of course, there's more on the community, like answering questions or interacting or reporting bugs is really important as well. Like to 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 report a high quality, to have a high quality report of a bug is really valuable, and this is not accounted here. Uh, I think that's the most value of open source is having like this interactions with people and with the intent of growing and stabilizing things on the framework. It's close to an end. A special thanks to all the sponsors for Colises, that is Blox, uh, Pocky, and Xerox N is like a consulting company for crypto. And yeah, Pocky, you probably know. And Blox, I showed their game to all the individual support as well. And that's it for the talk. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks a lot for having me. I'm really glad to participate. And yeah, of course, you can ping me, send me a message on Discord, on uh, Twitter, X, whatever. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to talk to you.